This here is a carbon steer tube plug, which I'm going to install into this here carbon bike. And we're going to install it using viewer suggestions. Keep watching and we'll visualize what these comments explain. So I, I did this video on a Scott Plasma Pro, which I no longer have. And I was having trouble with the OEM carbon steer tube plug. It kept pulling out of the steer tube and I actually got quite a few good constructive comments from some good constructive viewers. <laughs> so some of them explained the different problems that they had with carbon steer tube plugs and how to remedy these problems. So what we're going to do is focus on some of the, I guess, the more expressive comments. And what we'll do is we'll implement them and we can just kind of watch and see what these guys are talking about. Now, with any luck, maybe the original commenters will comment again, and I'm all for it. <laughs> so we have a uh, dude on a bike, 800, who basically says the neural plug you remove on the right is totally bone dry. And this you can watch in the original Scott video, which I'll try to put right here if I remember. And without being too rude, he explains that the, the plug needs grease on the inside. Now, to the layman, one wouldn't want to grease a plug because it could just pull right out, right? But basically what he's saying is you, you grease the innards of the plug and don't grease the outers. <laughs> the part that would uh, cinch onto the inner side of the carbon steer tube. So in not so many words, that's basically what he said. Just kind of go through here. And we have another guy who's saying that carbon plugs should be torqued to 10 newton meters and not as tight as you can. But you know, if it's pulling out of the steer tube, right, then perhaps maybe it needs to go a little tighter than the recommended newton meters. But you know, like that's what we're here to do. We're here to kind of visualize what these guys are saying. And unfortunately, we won't be able to know how it works until later. <laughs> so again, here we go. We're just gonna we're just gonna disassemble this carbon plug here. And of course, the guy's right. Dude on a bike there. He said that there's no grease. So it's true. There is no grease. Maybe he's the guy that sold me this part. <laughs> Anyways, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this free cat grease that I found at uh, some uh, garbage part of it, uh, a construction site. Anyways, uh, we're just gonna use that. So what I said is. There's a popular belief that grease and carbon don't mix, so how do you explain this out? And we had another guy here, I guess Montreal Mountain Bike Tech 7960 said that there's carbon safe grease. He says a brand name that we all know. And also to use a bit of the, the carbon anti-slip, carbon grip stuff. And I said thanks, but we're gonna say that we don't have these things, so we're just gonna see what dude on a bike has to say about mixing carbon and he says grease and carbon mix just fine. And <laughs> I really like this one because it's kind of true. It's like the crowd that erroneously believes you shouldn't grease crank tapers. Some people will never learn or listen. You know, everyone has their opinion and that's what the comment section is for. It's, it's not for saying like foolish things just because you're bored. You want to contribute to the community here. Now, it's not that this hasn't been done before, but it's, it's more of a, a user look at what's actually happening here versus just some guy who's just, you know, reading off the uh, installation manual to you. So we just got to figure out how this goes on, this little piece, and we'll just put the wedge on here. And you can see that there's this kind of open part, and that will expand as the wedge gets uh, further up the bolt. And, you know, it's, it's a tapered wedge, so it'll just kind of push it out. We just want to clean it off here. So I have some alcohol and a paper towel. I'm gonna make sure it's clean of any grease and hopefully it'll just stay stuck inside the uh, steer tube. So now I had another problem there where the, uh, the top of the plug was off center. So it wasn't flush with the steer tube top and somebody addressed this for us. Uh, Trail Fork 7815 says, install the stem first and it will act as a guide while you tighten that plug. Now, I don't get anywhere without asking questions and I understand it but I, I feel this could be explained a little bit better. So I basically just asked, how does one get the compression if installing the stem first? And of course I invited to 
to, you know, if you want to make a video, go ahead. You can just put it here. If I'm not learning, I'm not living, and that's kind of the truth. Now, I understand what he's saying, but you have to just kind of know that the plug will just fit right through the stem. And I'm not sure that this was the case with that other plug that we were talking about. And you can see this in, uh, in the other video, and I'll try to link it again right here. So we'll just kind of visualize what he was talking about. I'll take the, uh, the stem off. We'll just kind of see and yeah, the plug fits right through. I didn't even have to take the stem off. So essentially you can just drop it in and you would tighten this up. But the, you know, that's that's a problem, right? So without proper instruction, what do you do? It, it would probably just spin around in there. We're just gonna open up some of the replies on this comment here about tightening up the, the steer tube plug. And dude on a bike 800, he says, 10 Newton meters of torque is irrelevant when everything's bone dry, uh, waterproof grease. So only after greasing the fork plug bolt threads, heads and wedges will the torque, the 10 Newton meters of torque on the bolt head actually create the intended expansion force needed. And this is most certainly why the plug continue to slide out the steer. So let's take a peek here. Just spinning it around it, it kind of goes in there and in this case I didn't really tighten the stem but it looks like it's just spinning around and it's what you don't see that kind of matters so it's spinning around in there but really it's actually tightening up inside of the wedge so it looks like the whole bolt is spinning but it's not because the whole top of the plug is a bolt we'll just move on over to the top cap and now had you tightened up the stem first you need to loosen it in order for the top cap to get the compression. So we're just gonna screw it on in here. And I'm just using this old Allen wrench because that's like what was right there. Try to keep it as centered as possible, but I'm not sure that's gonna work out. So we just kind of spin it around. Oh, yeah. We gotta be careful that you don't uh, strip the bolt. <laughs> that might be a pain to get out. And what we need to do is get proper compression. We could go by the recommended torque, but if it's still jiggling, it's still jiggling. You're going to need more compression. There we go. I think I've achieved it. Right there, I'm just kind of grabbing the brake, seeing if there's any play, and it seems to be pretty good. I'm sure my neighbors hate it that I'm dropping it on the floor all the time, but that's why I have that carp. <laughs> All right, so I just kind of make sure that it's all nice and straight and we're just going to kind of quote unquote tack it in. So we're going to tack the bolts in so that it, it stays centered, right? So that way if we, we hit the bike or whatever, it's not going to move. Then after we'll go at it with the torque wrench because that's where the torque is really going to matter. We don't want to over torque these bolts simply because it can deform the steer tube. And we put a lot of effort into trying to figure out how these carbon plugs could work. So it, the stem tells us five Newton meters on each bolt. So I've got my torque wrench here. I have it set to five Newton meters and you have to trust your torque wrench. It will click off and you'll hear it here. Kind of got stuck in there a little so we'll just move on over to the other bolt and again you're gonna be afraid at first but you have to trust your torque right really you should test it out first on something else maybe an aluminum steer tube there's your click uh just so like you get a feel of how your torque wrench works if you never hear a click, then there's a very good chance that uh, <laughs> you shouldn't use it. So here we go. Just give it a quick test. The compression is fine. There's no play in the fork. I hope this video helped you out. If you want to watch the uh, first video where I had the problem with the carbon plugs, you can click right here.